Welcome to British Eventing's Cross Country Fence Judges Briefing for the 2022 season. For those of you who have viewed the 2021 briefing video, this online briefing has no material changes or alterations for this season. For those of you who are viewing for the first time, we hope you find this video informative. At the time of recording this introduction, the COVID-19 protocols we have in place for sport delivery have been significantly scaled down from the previous two seasons. This online briefing will be available to view throughout the season and some events may return to a COVID safe on venue briefing. So please check with your event organizing team on their preferred protocol. Updates to BE Sports protocols can also be found on the BE website. Collection of your fence judge equipment may vary from event to event. So please confirm with your event organizer the system they will be using. They may be using an on-venue briefing where you will pick up your equipment, or they may be using a drive-through collection system, which was used throughout the 2020 and 2021 season. The use of your equipment listed here on this slide will be explained as we go through the presentation, but these items should be included in your equipment packs. Once you've collected your fence judging equipment, your cross-country steward or event organiser will have told you how to get out onto the course and what the first course is that we're starting the day with. So you need to head for that coloured number. So for example, if it's a BE90 course, you'll be heading for the orange numbers and so on and so forth. Once you've found your fence, the most important thing is to A, find where you need to park your car. This may not be the best position to judge from. You might have to get out of your car and stand behind your fence, but a suitable, safe position to park your car is the first thing. Check that you're happy with the fence. Check that you're happy with the, that it's flagged correctly and that you're happy with the takeoff and the landing. All of these would have been checked the day before. It is also worth noting where the stringing is around your fence. Should you have a problem in your fence and the capacitor needs to walk home, um, the best thing to do is to find out how they can easily get access off the course and walk home. If you're judging a combination fence, it is worth walking all the routes to find out what the competitors may or may not be allowed to do and also double checking your instructions for fence judges as to what they can do at those type of fences. It is important that if you don't understand or you can't work out what the routes are, to ask either the technical advisor or the cross country steward when they come round to check you're happy and um, what the routes might be and how you should be judging them. The last thing to do will be to make and memorize your timing landmark. Now this will needs to be a good enough distance in front of your fence. And one of my colleagues will go through that slide later on in the presentation. And it might be a gate post, it might be another fence, or indeed it might be an, an electric fence state that you might bring with you to signify your landmark. Hi, so fence judging is a great way to get involved in our sport and eventing. But it's not just a case of ticking a box and watching nice horses jump fences. You do have several other responsibilities as well as judging your fence. For example, it's not very safe for granny or granddad to be pushing a push chair with a couple of young kids in behind the big brush fence that you're judging. Very unsafe. So you're responsible for the area around your fence, the takeoff area, the landing area, and the, the approach to your fence. This must be kept clear at all times of anything which might hinder the travel of that, that horse and rider. This can be done mainly with a whistle. So when you see the horse approaching, a few blasts on the whistle will just let everybody know that there's a horse in the vicinity and that they must keep clear of the course. Um, if that doesn't happen, then use of voice is good as well. Um, but it is very important that that course is clear for every rider. Secondly, ground maintenance. There's a French repair team out there that will keep everything uh, as good as they can do, but it would be very helpful to them if you could tread in the ground after a certain number of horses. Um, if it's firmish ground, it's not a necessity, but uh, if the ground is a little bit soft, just treading in the ground on takeoff and landing areas, um, if it gets cut up, is, uh, is, is good practice. Uh, if you need to have the assistance of the fence repair team, then you can go through to control on your radio, and, and ask for that assistance. Uh, the, the, the other responsibility would be frangible fences. Now, frangible fences, um, these devices will be discussed in detail later in the presentation, but in terms of responsibility for the fence judge, uh, you need to keep checking that the device is in 
sort of work in order and that it's not uh, been uh, impacted or um, not not bent or deformed. Uh, but as I say, that will be covered more in uh, a later stage of this presentation. In terms of judging your fence, you can refer to your instruction booklet that you've got in your packs and uh, that will give you uh, much more detail. There are some uh, diagrams as well at the back of that booklet which will show you uh, or indicate to you about refusal to run outs and circles. But in general, as the rider and horse approach the fence, you have got to make a decision as to whether the fence was jumped correctly or whether the, the fence wasn't. Generally, if the fence wasn't jumped correctly, then that will incur 20 penalties and the rider then has to uh, represent at the fence. The whole crux of this though, is that the rider can pull the horse out from jumping that fence, even at a very late stage. So the decision to be made by the fence judge is, did the rider pull the horse out or did the horse make the decision? If the horse made the decision, that's when the 20 penalties is incurred. So, just as a tip, instead of watching that glorious grey horse approach your fence and look how wonderful it's moving, keep an eye on the rider's hands. And that is your best indicator as to what the rider has decided to do at that fence. If in the approach of that fence, the rider is pulling on the left or right hand rein to try and pull the horse away from the fence, even at the last minute, that is absolutely fine. They are allowed to do that and it's not penalised. They can then circle away and, and represent. Um, but if the horse makes the decision to run out or to stop at that fence, then that would be 20 penalties. Secondly, you need to be consistent and fair to all competitors. So whatever you decide to do with one competitor, it would make, uh, make sense to treat everybody the same. So if you are judging, let's say, a ditch where the horses may well come to a stop um, or a run into water where they may come to a stop at certain levels, that is OK. Judge the fence on the, the amount of time that they are actually still before they move forward. So if you decide that you're going to give them three seconds at that fence, please give every horse and rider three seconds at that fence. Always make sure that you stick to the rules. And if you're not sure about a decision that you've made, just radio through the control, get the steward or the TA to come out and you can discuss it with them and generally make a decision before the horses, horse and rider have even finished their, their um, cross country round. And then there's no change of scores at the end. Again, in that process, if you're not sure about something, then do a quick diagram on a sheet of paper and uh, that can you can discuss that with the uh, official that comes out to, to help you uh, make that decision. One of the things that uh, in our sport we're all very aware of is abuse of horse and everybody on site must be aware of uh, any abuse that is given towards a horse and should be reported accordingly. Whip of use, uh, use of the whip should I say, is one of the methods in which uh, abuse of a horse can take place. Now, riders are allowed to use the whip um, in certain circumstances, in other words, to encourage the horse to move forwards or as a, as a reprimand. Um, it must be made at the appropriate time when the horse is reluctant to go forwards and uh, you can see that the rider is using seat and legs, uh, uh, their normal aids, or as a reprimand immediately after a horse has um, been disobedient. It must be in the right place where the where the whip is used down the shoulder or behind the leg, uh, but never over arm. So if you do see a rider carrying the whip in and in uh, pointing upwards, then uh, control should be informed so that an official can actually watch. But anybody holding the whip in that that upright position um, is going to has the intent of using it um, inappropriately. Let's say. And secondly, or thirdly, the uh, use of whip mustn't be severe. In other words, now we've followed the FEI guidelines, which states that the whip can only be used twice in any one incident. And 
if you're in a situation where a whip has used, been, been used twice before a fence, after the fence and in between the fence, wouldn't be classed as different incidents and therefore that use would be excessive. The other things to look out for in terms of excessive use of whip would be where a whip is being used um, to vent a competitor's anger, where the whip is being used after elimination and where the whip is being used on the horse's head or neck. All of those situations are excessive or if you do notice that the skin is broken or there's whip wheels as we call it that's also excessive use of whip all of those situations must be reported to control immediately that it happens so that the appropriate action can be taken by the officials being told at half past five in the evening is far too late for a report to come in about excessive use of whip as fence judges, the most common penalty that you will have to adjudicate on is the refusal. Firstly, at obstacles in excess of 30 centimetres. As soon as a horse ceases forward movement in front of the fence, that should be 20 penalties. And for safety, the rider should immediately turn the horse away and represent for a second attempt. If that happens for a second time, obviously that's the second cumulative refusal, 40 penalties. Turn away again for a third and final attempt. If the horse refuses for a third time, it is eliminated and the rider should uh, leave the course at the walk. If, however, the horse jumps the fence from a standstill, you should immediately record it in your book and report it over your radio the circumstances of a stationary jump because that comes under dangerous reckless riding and the BE steward may well need to speak to the rider to educate them as to their conduct. The rider in turning away to represent for a second or third time crosses the, his or her original track. This does not count towards the second refusal. The second part of the refusal rule applies to fences of less than 30 centimetres in height. Therefore, obviously, the edge of the water, a step down or a ditch. For the judge to be able to judge this type of obstacle correctly, it is vitally important that they are parked parallel at right angles to the line of the fence so they can clearly see what the horse's feet do in such a situation. Your judgment is required, and if you carefully observe the horse as it approaches such an obstacle, you will get an idea of its reaction from some way away very often. If the, whole, if the hesitation is at all prolonged or sustained, or if the rider has to redouble their efforts to make the horse proceed, it is definitely 20 penalties. Obviously, if one hoof steps back, that is definitely 20 penalties. The rider should then be told that you have awarded them 20 penalties. In video one, we see a two-part combination fence. The rider successfully jumps part A, and the horse completely stops uh, at the second element. And then because it is a very low fence made of brush, the rider actually forces the horse to jump it perfectly safely. But in my opinion, that should be given a refusal because the brush exceeds 30 centimeters of height and the horse momentarily completely stopped and the rider had to redouble their efforts to make the horse continue. 20 penalties. With the second video, we see a war and second water jump. The rider successfully jumps the brush up to A and then the horse most definitely swings away to its left and also steps backwards 
before the rider quickly reacts to turn it back and to then successfully go through the water. But its reaction, although it was some meters back from the edge of the water, was as a result of the horse seeing the water and it definitely turned away and stepped back, incurring 20 penalties before it continued. In our, in our third video, we see a horse jumping the first element, a roll top, before the water. It then slows down at the edge of the water, moves slightly to its left, but forward movement is continued, however slowly, and despite the slight for sideways step, that would be a clear zero penalty situation. Judging runouts can be a confusing element of your role as a fence judge. It is important to understand the rules and the definitions. A horse is considered to have run out if, having been presented at an obstacle or element, it avoids it in such a way that the body of the horse, which is defined as the head, neck, shoulders and pelvis, but not including the legs, fails to pass between the extremities of the originally flagged obstacle. The horse will have successfully negotiated the fence if the body of the horse has jumped through the fence as originally flagged. If a competitor does have a run out, they can represent, usually by circling, which incurs no penalties, or maybe jumping an alternative if available. Elimination will incur if a competitor does not represent and instead continues on down the course. It is also important to note that there's no penalty for knocking down a fence flag. Competitors may ask if they have to retake the fence, and at that point, you must inform them whether it is necessary to do so, and that does not constitute outside assistance. In this next series of video clips, try and determine whether the horse successfully or unsuccessfully jumped the obstacle and whether they need to represent. In this video, it is clear to see that after trotting through the water, the horse's head, neck, shoulders and pelvis pass through the flagged obstacle. This means that although the flag was dislodged and knocked down, they can continue down the course without receiving any penalties. In this second video clip, on approaching the skinny brush after the water, you can see the horse goes to run out to the right and dislodging the flag. Although they, can, they pass between the flags, the horse has not made a significant effort to jump the fence and could be argued has not jumped the extremities of the original flagged obstacle and should be awarded a run out. This competitor was judged to have run out and did not represent to the fence or its alternative. In the next two video clips, you will see the horses jumping through a combination. The first part being a table and the second part being a skinny brush. The skinny brush, as you'll see, has black tape on its flag heads, which signifies that there is an alternative. The important thing from a cross-country fence judging perspective is that you can understand the routes that they should be taking, and indeed whether the horse and rider has presented at the second part of that combination and how you should judge that. It is worth noting that at any time the rider can ask the horse to come off its line to go to an alternative. You have to judge as to whether it was a rider's decision or indeed it was a horse's decision to potentially run out of defence. In this video clip, you'll see a horse jumping a fence and then presenting to a corner. The horse, is, the horse and rider are intentionally locked onto the corner. They present, try to jump the fence and whilst doing so dislodge the flag, but they successfully pass between the flags. Our next video sees a combination of frangible pinned corners. Frangible fences will be discussed later on in the presentation. You'll see our competitor approaching both corners. She dislodges the first uh, white flag with her foot, comes around to the second corner, and again, whilst trying to jump the obstacle, knocks out the red flag. It is really important here as you can see by the video, where the fence judges are. You have one fence judge standing behind the back of the fence or as the horse is moving away to see whether the horse's head, neck, shoulders and pelvis pass between the flags. So the positioning of yourself of the, of, as a fence judge is really, really key, either as the horse is going away from you to jump the fence or coming towards you and jumping a skinny fence.
In our final video clip of this session, you'll see the horse and rider approaching the skinny brush. When they attempt to jump the brush, the horse tries to run out to the right and obviously doesn't pass between the flags as the flag gets stuck between its two front legs. Knocks a flag down, the rider quick thinkingly and turns around and jumps the alternative, which is to jump this fence backwards. So they receive their 20 penalties for the run out, they negotiate second time clear and they go on to continue the course. Circles and crossing tracks. These can con cause confusion to all of us. At separately numbered obstacles, a competitor may circle or cross their tracks between or around them without penalty, provided he is not presented at the second or subsequent obstacles. At an obstacle comprising of several elements, A, B, C, etc., a horse will be penalised once it has jumped the first element and before it has jumped the last element, if it passes around the back of any element or the lettered combination that it subsequently jumps, or it crosses its tracks between elements. You should also note that the faults of refusal, run out and circle are only penalised if you judge that they are connected with jumping or trying to jump your fence. This means that someone may circle before they jump your fence in the approach to it, or even circle around your fence before they present without penalty. If they've had a run out or refusal at your fence, they may circle or cross their tracks as many times as they like without penalty until they represent. In the first video example, the rider is clearly not intending to take the straight route and always intended to go around in a circle to present to the fence. The eagle eyed amongst you will see the fence is numbered A, B, C, D and as such, even though it was intentional, 20 penalties would have been given in this instance for circling stroke crossing tracks between elements. If they had been separately numbered, then this would have been permissible without penalties, as they clearly didn't present until after they had circled. In the second video example, I would suggest that the rider was intended to go straight on, as indicated by the pull on the right rein, so I would judge a run out for this, but this is for you as the fence judge to decide on the day. If you have a combination fence on the day, please ask if you want clarification once you're in position of what is permissible, and if you're at all unsure of how to judge a particular circumstance, please radio through straight away and someone will come and discuss it with you. Black flag alternative there used to be a bit of a minefield, but now we're all used to them. They're relatively straightforward. It just indicates that there's an alternative option to that fence or element in the combination you're judging. These can be for a number or for an individual letter. Black flags can be marked either with a black line on the red and white flag, or if more than one class is jumping that fence with a black line on the relevant number. For example, if intermediate and novice are jumping and novice have an alternative, then you'll find there'll be a black line on the yellow or novice number. The black flag indicates there is an alternative for that fence or that element only. Riders can elect to, judge, to jump the direct route at A and the alternative at B, and they're not penalised as long as they haven't presented at B first. When we move on to the video that goes with this and explains out, you can see clearly what's happening. This is at Burley a number of years ago. The direct route, the riders jump a triple brush straight over the ditch and to another triple brush. The alternative route has a black flag alternative to the A element and the C element. The B element, as you'll see, doesn't have an alternative and riders can just approach it from a slightly different way. They swing out and go to the alternative triple brush at A. Then they go round the back of the direct route at C and that becomes inconsequential because they're not jumping it. Now they go down the ditch and they have left the white on their left and the red on their right and they swing to jump the alternative at A. At C, if we look at it in the slow details, you'll see now that they jump A and as I said, the C element that they go around the back of now is, is, is inconsequential because they're going the long route. 
And as they turn to go down the ditch, they leave the white flag on their left and the red flag on their right. So they've gone the correct way there and swing right-handed and go and jump the alternative there. So they're very clearly clear at that fence and don't receive any penalties. But just like any combination fence, they're penalized if they pass around the back of the element that they're going to jump or if they cross their tracks between elements. So hopefully that's black flags ticked. Falls are divided into two categories, a rider fall and a horse fall. A rider is considered to have fallen when he is separated from his horse in such a way as to necessitate remounting or vaulting back into the saddle. A horse is deemed to have fallen when both its shoulder and its quarter have touched either the ground or the obstacle on the ground at the same time. A fall of rider, horse or both will result in elimination. It is important that you judge correctly what type of fall has happened. A horse fall has a much bigger impact on a horse's performance rating than a rider fall. Falls happen very quickly and you don't usually have the option of looking at slow motion replays. Watch this and see what you think happens. Was it a rider fall or a horse fall? Now watch again in slow motion. Were you correct? The horse's shoulder and quarter were never on the ground or the obstacle in the ground at the same time. So this is not a horse fall, it's a rider fall. You are the on-the-spot observer of a fall, so you are in the best position to supply accurate data about the fall. All fields on the form must be completed and filled in correctly. If you have any questions or are unsure, please ask for a BE official at the event to come and help you. Please enter the data as accurately as you can. Don't be swayed by others. Enter the information as you believe it happened. This is a list of the most common penalties you will encounter on the cross-country. This can also be found in the fence instructions to fence judges booklet. This is an example of a fence judge book. Make sure you write down the class, obstacle, your judge, your name, the sheet number. If the horse is clear, please put a tick. If the horse has penalties, please add up the t penalties. There's also a slot for the time when the horse has approached the fence and a place for the remarks. If you're unsure of a competitor's number, write down a question mark and put in remarks any noticeable features such as the wider's colours. This is also a good place to put in any additional information such as overuse of whip spurs or anything which you're unhappy about. But also remember to report that in via the radio to control. If you have a horse trapped at your fence, they are eliminated. It's important that the rider gets off the horse and holds its head. Please at this point radio through to control explaining that you've got a trapped horse at which point the cavalry will arrive en masse and will help to extract the horse. Most of the time when horses are trapped they are very understanding and they stand quite quietly until they are extracted. So please do not try to extract the horse yourself. Fence repair and the vet will come and help to remove the horse from the fence. When you get out to your fence, you want to pick a timing marker, ideally about 100 metres before your fence. As every horse approaches your fence, take their time. This time will be the frozen time. One time will always be rolling and one time will be frozen. Write down this time after you've judged your fence. It's important we have this time all the way around the course, as if a competitor is impeded on progress around the course, 
we can use that time to give them an amended time. If you're at the first fence, please take the time as they're coming out of the start box. And if you're at the last fence, please take it as they're going over the last fence. It makes it easier for us to make sure that the times are correct around the course. You may be asked by control to stop a horse on course. Alternatively, you might have a fence which is unsafe to be jumped by the next competitor. In these both situations, you will need to stop the horse on course. To do this, make sure you've got your clock in one hand and your red flag hidden behind your back. As the horse goes past your timing marker, take their time. And then and only then, wave your red flag below your shoulder to stop the horse. Once the horse has stopped, explain to the rider where your timing marker is. You will be given plenty of warning and the rider will have plenty of warning as to when you will be restarted. If the rider's been held for a long time, they can warm up. Or if it's foul weather, they can. Uh, someone can put a rug on the horse and that would not be deemed to be outside assistance. So control will radio through and say, restart the horse, get them to go back up the course and come past your timing marker at cross country pace. The important thing in this situation is that any time you take the times, please make sure that you write down those stopping times and start times and radio through to control. If you've got any questions or you need any assistance in the restart, please radio through to control and either the TA or steward will be out to help you. As I've said before, if there's a trapped horse at your fence, get the rider to dismount and hold the horse's head. Radio through to control and control will send out the cavalry to extract the horse. If you need assistance, please radio through to control. If control does not respond to you, please radio again. In an emergency situation, control will always re to respond to you. If for some reason you are concerned about whether your radio is not working, please ra wave your red flag frantically to the next fence and hopefully they will see and pass on to control. After a fall at your fence, if you've got any concerns about the horse or rider, please radio through to control and ask for a vet or a doctor to attend. The rider should not remount their horse until they've been cleared by the doctor. If you have an injured rider on the floor, please do not attempt to loosen their air jacket, their clothes or remove their hat. Wait until the doctors and paramedics get there. The only thing you should do before medical help arrives is to clear a blocked airway. Unless they're floating face down in the water jump with their air jacket, keeping them the wrong way around. Make sure your radio is turned on and keep it with you at all times. You communicate with control and your primary objective is safety and information. Make sure you don't change the channel of your radio and if you're not sure, how to use it, then when the TA or cross-country steward sees you in situ at your fence, you can ask them and they will answer any queries. Remember, only one person can speak at any one time, so don't talk over anybody else. And always send your message clearly. Report each rider over the fence and report refusals as they happen. Please don't wait till the rider has had three refusals and is leaving the course. If you have a fall at your fence, say clearly horse fall or rider fall as appropriate. Give your fence number and your horse's number and what assistance you need and whether the course is blocked or clear. So in the situation of having a fall, it will be a two way conversation. So keep your radio with you and listen clearly for the information that the controller requires. If you have a fall at your fence, that takes precedence over any other reporting, unless you're at another fence where you have a fall, in which case you must tend control immediately. Keep listening and observing. You are the controller's eyes and ears, but remember, never depress the pressel on the side and blow the whistle. You'll deafen the controller and put him or her in a bad mood. If your radio bleeps, tell control and a new battery will be brought to you. 
B understands that you may want to share your experience of volunteering at an event with your friends and followers on social media. We are more than happy for you to share information about the event, trade stands, attractions, encouraging people to come and enjoy the event, links to the sponsors, any positive results and achievements. But please be mindful of the following. Do not make controversial comments about riders, volunteers, the event or British eventing. Most importantly, in the case of a serious incident, please never post anything on any form of social media until the official statement has been published. Once the statement has been published, the organisers will share the information. So, in summary, if you see an accident, please communicate with the officials using the radio as per the instant plan, but please never comment on social media until the official statement has been published. Fences. Your fence may be fitted with a frangible device. This may be a frangible pin or a MIM clip. A front pin is fitted on the front of the post. A reverse pin is fitted on the back of the post. A MIM clipped fence has a clip on each post, usually red, but you may this year also see some fences with yellow clips. If you have a frangible fence, you need to observe the device and monitor any changes that may occur, a bending of a pin or a flag indicator sticking out on a MIM clip. If you see these indicators, ask the fence repair to come and check the fence. If a device fails and the fence is lowered, immediately advise control that your fence is no longer jumpable and that you need fence repair to come and fit a new pin or clip. We have now come to the end of our Fence Judge briefing presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to go through this presentation and we look forward to welcoming you to a B event this season. Without you and so many other volunteers, our sport could not run. So on behalf of British Eventing, our organisers and our members, thank you.